Hi everybody, this is another video I'm doing for you guys. And uh, we're talking about 3,000 watt, 6,000 pick. Trust me, guys. Those people in China need to know st to stop putting the 6,000 pick because the thing doesn't work, doesn't even come close to the pick one. Don't know why they're doing this. This inverter works. It gives you 3,000 watt that as this thing says it in there. Continuously, it can give you 2,000 watt. I have tested multiple times. I have other videos. Also, if you guys uh, make a comments on on uh, make a, make a comments on my on this video, I will show you. I'll, I'll send you the link. Okay. I'm trying to take it apart. It was it wasn't difficult to take it apart. Okay. I like this inverter. I want it to work, but the voltage the voltage they're producing is less than what it's supposed to be. I overload the video. The, this thing. I overload this. Because I didn't, I didn't do it on purpose, but I put this thing in the house. The whole house was running on it. So I kind of go over 3,000 watt. The thing said 32 right there. Can you guys see this? 32. It, it, this thing well over 32. 3,200 watt. It does. It's pretty good. Okay. So I was able to use this inverter to power the whole house. Going off grid for a couple of days. Until I overload it. When I overload it, on this on this view, on this screen they have there, it shows a funny number. It did. When after I overloaded, it reset itself. I came back, I go back to my garage and I saw the numbers are different. When I check the voltage on the AC on this thing, I check the voltage in here, with the AC unit, the C output. It's told me about 69, 60 something volt. That's when I know there's something wrong. So that's when I know there was something wrong in there. So so I figured maybe there's some MOSFET is blown. I look everywhere. Okay guys, I look everywhere. There's no issue on the there's no issue in the MOSFET. There's none. I can literally look at it and I start checking those earlier. I do not know exactly how to check it, but there's somebody who's telling me how to check it. If you check the voltage, see right now there's no continuance in here. Let me show you guys. Okay. There was a fuse I was checking. All the fuses, because you can tell the fuse. This is about a couple of fuses in there. I was thinking about changing all the fuses. When you look at the fuse, really. It is not broken. So I have this thing sitting there. I have this thing sitting right there. Now if you check the fuse, right now, there's no continuous, it gives you a number. But look at the fuse. There's nothing wrong with the fuse. Okay? See, there are no continuation. Here there is continuation, it gives you zero. So there's nothing wrong with the fuse. If you do the same thing, this is going to give you a number. I don't know if you guys can see this. See, I give you a number. That's in the MOSFET. The other one, same thing. I check every single one of them, there's nothing wrong with them. I heard earlier somebody was talking on the video. Says if you overload it, it can give you a short circuit. Something it does, so therefore you have to short you have to short the inverter. He advised not to do that because you may blow up the MOSFET. So we look at the, all the MOSFET, friend. Guys, I'm looking at all the MOSFET. There's nothing. With your eyes, you can't see anything wrong with it. Okay? There is there is three MOSFETs or four MOSFETs in there. I don't know how many is in there, I can't even see. But I saw three of them so far, but I cannot tell. So no worry about those. Now on those MOSFETs, it's the same thing. Let me go over this thing with you guys. You see, there's none of them is broken there. If we test a couple of them, you'll see you got the same result. Okay, I believe this is the input. The input. This thing called DC power. We don't have no room, guys. 
maybe it's staying a little bit higher for you guys. Let's check one of those MOSFETs to see what number it gave you. Is the connection done? I think the connections are messed up. It's not a clean connection. There we go. You see, guys? I don't think there's nothing wrong with the MOSFET. This is very hard to do, guys. I think there's some glue on top of it, so that doesn't get the connection right. If you look at it, if there was something wrong with it, you would tell. Okay, this is all the MOSFET there. I don't think none of this blue. There's some glues in there. That's why I can't get the right connection in there. There's nothing wrong with them. So, Based on the video that I was watching earlier, somebody mentioned something about something about the overture overload. I'm assuming something wrong with the overload. So what I'm gonna do, put it back together. See, there's a glue on top of it. I can't even tell. That's why I can't get the connection right. There's a plastic here. Okay, folks. What I'm gonna do, put it back together. Put it on its tray. There goes one of the tray. I'm gonna slide, this is slide in. You just slide it in there. It goes right between here. Okay, this, this is a protection. This is a protection for the thing not to, for the wires not to touch anything on the bottom. So I think it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna slide this thing in, guys. See, I lift this thing up and I slide it in. Okay, let me go ahead and do that because the camera's in my way. Okay, guys, you just slide this thing in, it'll go in. We just slide it and it's gonna go in. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, guys, I slide this thing in. So there's a connection there. You gotta put the screws in here. There's two screws on each side, and then you tie this thing in there. Okay, right there, you just screw it, and do the same thing on the other side. Okay guys, you see, now the thing's not shaking. This is those two screws that hold the inverter, on the back and each corner. You see, if you have the inverter like this, you can't see the MOSFET, so I double check the MOSFET. I don't think there's nothing wrong with the MOSFET. I think this thing overload, and then we got to reset it. I do not know how to reset it, so that's why we got the issue there. Now, if you just check this, the fuses, I don't think there's anything wrong with the fuse. I was thinking about removing all the fuses, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. So this is solidly put together. So I put the last fuse in there. I check all the fuse before, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. So the only thing I left to do for me, I'm just gonna write the manufacturer. I'm gonna reset this thing again. I think this thing is zero. Uh, the capacitor is zero. It's been a while since I took this thing apart. So I'm putting it back together. So I'll probably go test it. And this is it. Put it together, guys. Okay, guys, this is what I have there. Put the, put the inverter back to normal. It's only four, four, Four on this side, four screws on this side, I hold it. There's one, two, three, four. When you take the top, you take the first two. When you're taking the bottom, you take the next two. It goes in both ways. Okay. Okay, guys, this is what I got. So now, 3000 watt inverter 
from this company called CNSW I Power. They do have a website, so I look at the website. I'm going to write them, see if they can help me with this inverter. I kind of like the inverter. So I have several videos on this inverter. It does the job, but when you overload it, they got a problem. Okay? Oh, my advice to you guys, get those this kind. Don't get the other one that has a universal, universal connection. The one that has a universal connection doesn't have this, doesn't have the wire one. And... It's not good. I had it. It's only produced exactly 2,000 watt. Can't pass, can't plus any higher than that. But this one did go over 4,000 watt, so it did. I have previous video. You guys can check out the video. I put this thing together back. I put this thing together. Now I'm gonna just plug it in to see if the if the capacitor is is clearing up. So there's no other power. If this this thing come back. So I'm gonna pause this video and go back there and check and plug it in. And that cold is very cold in the garage. I'm gonna try to do that with you guys, for you guys, okay? I'm gonna be on the cold. Please subscribe because I'm gonna be on the cold. I don't feel like doing this, but I gotta do this for you guys. This inverter was working kind of, was working fine, then stopped working. Then I take it apart. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with the MOSFET. There's nothing wrong with the fuse. I was watching a video earlier. Somebody was mentioned when you overload it, you may have some problem with it, so you have to short circuit it. I'm not gonna short circuit it before I talk to the manufacturer. Well, because I drained this thing being drained before, there is no power on it, the capacitor has no power. So I'm gonna see if I plug it back in, everything comes back to normal. If it doesn't, I wait for the manufacturer to get back to me. Guys, let me, put, let, me put, let me put that thing on pause and go back there and try to do this for you guys. Okay, guys, I want to double check the capacitor inside the inverter has no power, no juice on it. Uh, this thing been sitting there for a while. Trust me, I tried this before, before I put it live. So this is the negative, the positive. If the capacitor has some charge, you're going to have some spark in there. See, there's no spark. There's no spark. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go in the positive. Another way is there's no juice on this. Capacitor is empty. You can't do that unless you 100% know this is empty. I know, I did the thing apart, there's nothing on it. Okay, so let me do it. Okay guys, I'm touching the positive and the negative together on the front. Okay, there's nothing there. See, no spark. It's about to be, if the capacitor was in there, do spark. Okay, the capacitor is empty, so it doesn't do spark. I'm hoping when I reach, when I replug this thing, the number is coming right. Because I was watching a video earlier. Someone mentioned when you overload this inverter, it has a tendency to stop producing power. The output is different, so therefore you have to short it. When you have to short it, you go to like this and short it. The only way you see spark or something's happen, this thing has voltage. Now, the capacitor inside of it has voltage. As you can tell, it has nothing. So, I'm going to go over there and plug it in. I'm hoping for the best. If it works, I think I'm back in the business. So, the problem was, it was overloaded. And it stopped producing the right, the right, the right AC power, which is supposed to be 120, but it was producing 100, and it was producing 60 volt on the AC output. Okay guys, I'm in the garage. I have all the batteries. I set them up. Let me show you how it looks like. This is about 15 kilowatt. This is about 15 kilowatt. I have a BMS there, it's not working. I have a top BMS. This BMS is working, the top is not working. I removed the top because it got some issues. Maybe wire issues, I gotta take care of it later. Now this is the inverter. I plug it in on the bottom. I turn it on. Okay. I'm turning on, get a little noise. This is the voltage you gave me. Give me 12 volt. Now I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna turn this thing to DC to AC power. I believe this is AC power. With 200 watt. Okay. And I'm gonna go to the positive in here and the negative. You're gonna see how much voltage you're giving me. 
Okay. Aye, aye. There we go. 679 volt. That's the AC output. 79 AC output. If I go this way, now you can see the numbers. Okay. This is what it's giving me. 80 volt. So I overload the inverter. I overload the inverter. Then since I overloaded, this is what it does to me. I'm not sure how to fix this. Okay. You put this thing inside there. It give you 80 volt. There we go. You guys can see 80 volt. This thing doesn't say 80, but it says 14. This might be an error, an error message gave you 14. That's probably an error code there. There's no manuals who tells me what the 14 means. How should I short it? How should, how should I fix it? I was hoping because the, everything is depleted. If everything is depleted, I should be fine. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So this is the end of videos. I attempt to fix it. I couldn't fix it. So uh, what the heck? I'm gonna post a video so you guys can enjoy it. Look at it. Maybe you learn something. Maybe you can comment it. Tell me how to fix it. In the meantime, I'm gonna take that video to to the manufacturer. So basically, it doesn't put. It was overloaded one time. It doesn't give me. <coughs> it doesn't give me the power no more. It does not produce 20 and 180 no more. It's produced 70, 80, 80.4 volt from the AC side. So it is what it is. Guys, that's the end of this video. I probably have an update for you guys if I fix it. I'll show you guys everything. Please subscribe to help the channel. Share, comment. It. I'll do my best to respond to all your comments. That's all, folks.